Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Uh, what can I say good about Dubby? I mean, I've been drinking Dubby for about a year now. Uh, I, I buy the tubs, and the tubs are just delicious. Uh, you just mix it in with a little bit of water, shake it up, and it's good to go. Um, and honestly, like I don't feel any sugar crashes or anything after drinking Dubby, and it makes me feel like really energetic and ready to go. Perfect for this haunt season, especially. Uh, so I'm going to be drinking a ton of Dubby this haunt season to keep me motivated, keep me going. But great people at Dubby gave me a coupon code to share with you guys, 10% off. When you use code Knights of Horror at checkout. So go check out Dubby and it's many, many positive reviews. Over 15,000 positive reviews of Dubby Energy. So don't take my word for it. Go read what other people had to say. Dubby Energy and use code Knights of Horror at checkout for 10% off your order. Enjoy the show. Unstoppable. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. We, as you could tell, are not at Knights of Horror Studios today. We are actually <laughs> on location at the Zoe Reborn Escape Room. Yeah. And I'm sitting with the creator, the mastermind behind all of this, on top of Rock Band and Pinocchio. Christina, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having me. It has been um, it's been it's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting us out here. This is awesome. <laughs> this whole place is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been a wild ride. We uh we got two locations now, with a, a total of going to be a total of four rooms. Wow. Yeah, it's it's absolutely crazy. But Zoe Reborn is our main event. It's our main attraction. It's what everybody comes here to come and play. Right. And then if we get them to play like the Invention Room or Rock Band, and then eventually Pinocchio when that one opens, um, then they get to talk about Zoe Reborn right. and see like actually what it really is. So it gives us a really good like talking point to right. start to get them into that stepping stone of getting into the horror world. <laughs> oh yeah. I, and I was telling you right before we went on the air, I've never done anything extreme. Um, last night uh, you invited us out to come play the game as well. Yep. Uh, and we're going to be doing that right after this. You'll get a reaction for us on, <laughs> uh, on our socials and stuff, but you'll get a full video, a full video. Yeah, yeah for so. sure. <laughs> I, and we are so, uh, I, at least me, I'm so nervous going into it, but I'm so also excited to go through it. Yeah. Um, because any way I can get a haunt fix, <laughs> right? Any, in the off season, I know. Because I, I mean, being open year round is like yeah. it's a challenge because obviously we do have like lighter seasons, and then we have our, our really crazy seasons, but right. it's still there, you know. So yeah. like, if you ever just like in the mood to like come and play something really, really intense and scary, we're here. <laughs> like, oh yeah, and that's the greatest <laughs> thing. week, <laughs> and I, and I love that because like, and it's and it's not just you, but you're starting to see that all over the world now. Yeah. Like everyone is starting to do a year round horror experience yeah. and the world of horror and Halloween is just growing more and more it every is. single year. It really is. Since you guys open, um, have you guys had like a lot of people come in and play this game? I mean, yes. I walked in and the funny part is, uh, and I, I'll take a picture of this because I, I thought it was just great that you guys <laughs> advertised this. I walk in and look at the whiteboard and it says tap out to this month. And the number that I currently saw was 66. Yep. I might be adding 67 to that tonight, but <laughs> I'm hoping I can, I can, I can stay clear of that 67. <laughs> but, um, I thought that was some of the funniest and the most genius thing to put up to yeah. intimidate your guests as you come. It does. It, it, it's, I mean, it's completely accurate. It's hundred yeah. percent accurate. And it really freaks people out. Cause then they, then they think that same thing of like, am I going to be number 67? <laughs> or is like, cause we had, we had a group the other night and this really added to that tally board. Um, um, it was a group of 11 and they all tapped out. Oh my they God. They all tapped out and they all, they got into our second room that we have out of 10 and they went, nope, this is too scary, too intense. Don't want to do it. <laughs> and that, ha that happens. Right. And, and the mostly the people who do tap out are the people who were either like along for the ride with their friends and right. they didn't really know what they were getting themselves into. Right. Or they really wanted to give it a try. And then they just, just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's a 50, 50 shot. And usually with games, um, it's very rare that an entire group does complete the game. It's wow. very rare. What's, it's what's your, one what's the, su the success rate for this? We like room. to say that it's a hundred percent just because we do have a game master that helps you throughout like the entire experience. So like if you, if you 
don't know the answer, but we want to push you forward in order to help you. Like you can ask for hints. Right. Um, there has only been a couple of groups that we've had to fail, but that's because they've been rowdy or like fighting back or right. hurt one of my actors. And then we got to We got to tap the game out. Right. Um, which has happened. It's, it's happened, but it is very rare because um, we're very strict on the rules. Like right. from the get go, like do not touch my actors. Do not try to fight back. Do not try to help your friends that they're taken. Like it's very, very strict. And, and so and we literally say like if you break any of these rules you are out of our game yeah and we don't we don't rightfully consider that so a, yeah we don't consider that a tap out right we're not so we're not going to add that to the board but like they're out yeah um it's more just for the safety of your crew and everything. 100 percent. and yeah. i take that so seriously that as soon as there is anything and my actors all know like i don't mean any offense by this but my first question to the actor it's not are you okay it's was it intentional do i need to shut this game down Right. That's my first question. My second question is, are you okay? What do you need? Right. And um, every, I explain this to every single one of my actors because I need to know, was this something that was an intent? Was it a reaction? Are you, and then are you okay? Right. Um, because I need to know immediately, do I need to shut off this music, turn off that, turn on the house lights and get them out of here? Right. Um, are you, you know, are you it, basically in the sense of like, are you safe or are you not safe right, right. now? Um, Cause I can't willingly send in my actor back in there right. uh, to do the next scare or whatever. Whatever. if they're going to miss something i can't willingly like do that right um and there have been a couple situations where i've asked that question and they say yes it was intentional they kicked me in the face and wow. you know this and, and immediately i shut the game down not right um, i tell them to have a seat you know get in there and shut the game down right uh but there has been some situations where they go no i'm fine it was a reaction i know for a fact that it was a reaction they just flinched and they got me like or like smacked me in the eye on accident i'm okay i just need a minute to sit down okay perfect and, and the cool part is is um I, I was fortunate enough to actually interview some of your cast uh who they have also worked at not scary yeah. farm in the past and stuff and a lot of those types of you know people especially that work in the haunt industry mm -hmm. know how to detect that mm -hmm. is they know if it's a reaction or they know if it's on purpose yeah and, and the training at knots and the training here because yeah. especially when you can touch people it makes it so that people feel like they could touch you back right and we make it clear from the get-go that that's not okay but there have been some situations that have happened, but right. they have to be ready for it um, at all times. I mean, even at knots, like I dealt with situations there. You know, I, I get it. I understand. And security is always on it mm -hmm. um, if they can find them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <don't run. laughs> um, but um, as far as for like myself, I knew that like what I want that to happen to me and right. I need to take care of my staff. My staff is my number one priority. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. And, and I think that's a really good like motto of how you come in and, and you question everyone, making sure that if it was intentional or not intentional, mm -hmm. just so you can get your kind of facts straight and everything. Yeah. Um, one of the, the I, so me and you follow each other on Instagram. Yeah. And one of the things that I love watching on a daily basis is all of the, um, footage yeah. that you show of guests going through it another one tapped out like yep. it like i think too like going into that scene some of that and i'm just like that's a little intimidating i'm a, I'm a little like i don't know how i feel about that but i'm gonna do my best to not tap out yeah um because i've watched about every horror movie that i can possibly think of so i think i kind of know what i what i can do and not do and, yeah and know where to go and not go so um I think it's just amazing what you guys are doing here. Oh, thank um, you. I've 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 had a lot of friends tell me how great the experience is. Oh, that's so um, you even went as far as to make uh, my good friend Lucio uh, <laughs> scream, and this is a guy who screams himself like crazy. At, After at you play, I'll show you his video. It's oh, so funny. it's it, yeah, and, and I, I think that was hilarious of just of, of just to see him that because like usually he's the one at haunt yelling yeah. at the people mm -hmm. now he's the one getting messed with exactly. and i'm just like laughing so hard watching just a little bit of footage it's that so I funny it's so funny and i i love having you know people in the haunt community come and play yeah because then i can actually chat with them and be like so like what you think and yeah. they're just like holy crap like <laughs> what was that like what did i just experience but that was so fun you know it's like a mixture of that what did i just what just happened to me and that was so fun yeah <laughs> And um, I I post a lot because I want I want to educate people on what we do. Right. Um. And it's like I want to show like the reality that like yes this is absolutely scary. Mm -hmm. But I also show a good happy medium of people smiling and having fun. Right. And also people being like shit terrified. Like, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I like to show like an equal balance. Hey, of, it's like, great free advertisement, right? Exactly. There you and, go. Like I have, I have personal friends that I've, I've been friends with for 10 plus years and they've never played. They won't play. They'll watch. <laughs> they'll watch. They'll come by the cameras and they'll come have fun. And like, we'll be boozing in my office or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> As far as for like playing the game, they're like, we're they good. touch it with a 10 foot pole. We're like, we'll stay on the sidelines <laughs> yeah, and watch. Exactly. That's but hilarious. Because it just shows it's not, it is not for everybody. It's not. Right. And it's okay. Like, it's okay that it's not for everybody, but at least like seeing like what, it, what your group could experience and like seeing like what we do, like mm-hmm. it's super important and valuable to me to like right. show my friends, my family members, you know, that, that what what we do right and um be able to have them laugh and watch like my mom will never play this game but she <laughs> loves me sending the videos and like showing her the reactions and the scares and my mom's the same i can't yeah. get, i can't get her to go to any haunt because <laughs> she's just terrified but she happily will watch it at home like when are you gonna put up the new pov for this this yeah, and this exactly. i was like well, why about you just come with me and you can be my exactly. pov <laughs> i was like but yeah she's terrible we, we took her to halloween horror nights one year she was losing it. She was yeah. grabbing onto me like crazy. The thing, I think the one thing she got to enjoy because it was open was the terror tram. Yeah. So like seeing the terror tram was just um a, a, an, ex, an exciting thing to, I'm like, oh, mom, you finally enjoy something. At least you're not terrified, you yeah. know? So um, yeah. And, and not, not to mention, uh, you know, it's not, when you come here though, it's not just uh, Zoe. I mean, you have other ones that are coming yeah. soon. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff that are going to be more obviously for family too, yeah. and obviously it's more horror stuff that I'm seeing. Yep. Talk to us about the uh, other games that are featured here or yeah. that are going to be featured. In the yeah, future. of course. So we have the invention room. Uh, the invention room is actually an original room from Escape Room Era. Okay. And uh, they turned it into a Christmas at Franklin's room. Okay. So it's a it's a replacement room. So we made some modified adjustments to the room. Um, added in a couple of new puzzles took out some old ones um, and readjusted the room to make it playable for two to four players. Um, it's perfect for like a date night or like a mom and a dad and a kid. Right. Like it's perfect for like intimate, like little families mm-hmm. um, to come and play. Um, it's solid puzzles um, as far as for like, it's definitely our hardest room that we have like puzzle wise. Right. Um, there, it's not scary fully family friendly and that was quite a challenge for me because <laughs> <laughs> to I'm make so something used not to like, scary yeah, exactly, yeah. to make something not scary so it was really fun to like really give myself a challenge even though i had a foundation right. to build off of from the original room because that one it opened in 2017 and okay. it only went until 2019 oh, so it like wasn't there for lifespan. that long yeah, yeah i only had a two-year lifespan and honestly the game had so much potential with really great puzzles right that i was like well, why don't we just revamp it, reopen it, right. like make it something fresh. We kept a couple of the traditional puzzles in there that w- it was known for. Right. But it's it's challenging, too, because it takes place in the 1700s. There's no light. It's yeah. it's all candlelit. So it's really challenging in that aspect. And like um, it's based upon Ben Franklin and knowing my about favorite ben Frank- president right? because he's the my favorite bill <laughs> right. everybody loves favorite Benjamin bill. Franklin. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um it's kind of interesting because looking into the stuff that ben franklin actually invented like right. the you know the grabber that like you like you can like pinch it and it like grabs something from the floor oh, the pickers yeah, yeah like yeah exactly. i use those at work every day he invented those thank you ben franklin you're making yeah. custodian lives a lot a lot a lot more easier <laughs> he invented that so it's like funny and then i didn't know that he actually did um illegal autopsies in his house oh, because now that's a horror game yeah. of its own right there so autopsies weren't allowed yeah. back then and they were literally illegal to do but he was so interested and curious in like the human body and like what makes the human body work that he just did them illegally in his house wow yeah really crazy so we I have think, that i mean in the i, I hope too. that's written in a book somewhere for a right? future game right there of like <laughs> Ben Franklin's secret autopsies. You have to. Well, it, we have some of those things in the room too. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, so like anything that's like revolving around Ben Franklin, like is in the room. And even right. though it's small, like you have to find the bones, you have to find like stuff like that. So right. it's it's really fun and like and only if you know that would you like enjoy the game a little bit more? So it seems definitely, like you had to do a little history homework yeah, for this one. Uh-huh, I had to do a little bit of history homework. Yeah. So, and I, I, I found it like super, honestly intriguing. Right. So even though it's family friendly, it still has that little creepy factor of like, there's that little uh, hint of it in there, the little Easter eggs and stuff. Yeah, right. So I was like, I got my little fix of horror in there. <laughs> And, and is this one open right now? It is open. It currently? is open and currently available for bookings, meant for two to four players. We can fit a fifth person in there, but it is going to be a little bit tight. Right. Um. So we just advertise this two to four players because I, I don't want to make somebody feel like 
they're too like there's too like too many people in there um, within this within the square footage that we have um trust me as then, a big person as, as as tall as i am we appreciate that yeah a lot. That way, so <laughs> you know like okay it's meant for two to four players so obviously it's not going to be that much square footage right. versus zoe which is up to 11 players so it's right. like you can kind of tell like how much space that there would be based on the amount of people yeah, that you yeah. can have in there um and then for like kids like we could we could probably fit a little bit more for kids because right. they're a little bit smaller right um but yeah and then um um, so that one opened officially a month and a half ago. So oh, sweet. it's just opened for bookings not too long ago. And it's been extremely successful so far um, as far as for like families, because it showed like Escapade doesn't only do horror. Right. Escapade can also do family friendly. Exactly. And, and that's what I like about it. When you come to a place like this, there is a game for everyone. Yeah, Someone exactly. can play something. And we've had so many people come in for the invention room that literally said to us, there's a new Zoe. Like, oh, we didn't. We played the original. We didn't even know there was, there was a, new a new one. one. And then they booked it either right after or like another day and came back and played Zoe. So it's a really, awesome. like, it's a really good talking point for us to be like, especially for adults, because um, not every, like I said, not everybody is into extreme horror. Right. Not everybody. But you know, as far as for like giving a talking point and putting a face name, seeing that we're not some weirdos like you know we're just normal people that yeah. created a fun game yeah um so it gives us a really good talking point where they're like oh okay like i can go play zoe sure oh yeah and then they go in and sometimes they tap sometimes they don't but they at least gave it a try you know 66 this month people 66 yeah, this month 66 this month <laughs> i'm telling i'm telling you that number's like etched in my head now just going into it i'm like i know it's gonna be 67 tonight probably you, never know. you, never know. <laughs> um, you can do it you can do I'm it i'm excited uh and then you got Pinocchio, yes. which is another, is that another horror based so, one? Yes, another horror based room. Now this one is going to have two options as far as for the intensity of the room. Um, there is going to be a no contact version, which okay. so it'll just be a live actor, spooky, scary. Um, and then there will be a full contact version as well. Oh, wow. Um, because um, I didn't want people to necessarily play Zoe and then have Pinocchio be like a step down right. from that. Um, so I wanted to keep it within the same realm if they would like to. Mm -hmm. um, but also for people who aren't quite ready to make the step to doing a full contact room like zoe um it made it so that they had the option to to have a no contact room as that's well. awesome and then also like be like okay now i've played a no contact room what would it be like to play a full contact room right so um and also like the theming of it like as far as per pinocchio pinocchio is uh it's public domain okay. um the only thing that we can't use is jiminy cricket that's right it's that's because that's disney fine disney, yeah. we can use um you know the blue whale we can say the blue fairy like right. we, and geppetto is part of the original story as well so we can use geppetto um um as far as for like our storyline here so like we're just basically telling guests like everything you know about pinocchio happened like everything happened as is you're caught up to the story right now after um pinocchio started he grew up mm -hmm. and he's like in his teens now and he recognized that geppetto was spending a lot of time in his wood shop and started getting weird and strange right um started like becoming awkward and like angry right. towards things um and as far as for like itself geppetto starts to get like kind of like that angry old man aspect and grumpy old man, yeah, grumpy like, old yeah. man and then gets like strange oh. and so pinocchio gets to the point where he's like i don't want i don't feel comfortable being anymore here anymore and he runs away right and geppetto can't find him Ooh. and so it gets to the point where geppetto gets not only is he now weird and angry and grumpy old man, but now he's alone hey. and he's isolated with his thoughts. Uh oh. And so when, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple, like a year goes by and he misses Pinocchio, he misses having somebody there because he had no one. Wow. And so he decided from that day that instead of turning a puppet into a real boy, he was going to go around town starting to collect children and turning oh. real kids into puppets. I'm, I'm sold. So that that way they stay with him. I'm sold. And they can't run away. Because oh, yeah. if you're a puppet, you can't run. Nope. So um, that's kind of the spin that we took on it. Uh, as far as for like the hand system within the room, your conscious is your guide. Oh. Um, so really, really cool, cool aspects into the room. I'm sold. Yeah. So yeah, it, I mean, it's, that, I, I feel like I was back at Midsummer Scream listening to a panel again yeah. of what was coming soon. You know, <laughs> like I'm like, oh, wow, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm like, it's going to be it's going to be probably our most theatrical room that we have that's fun. Um, because there's going to be special effects in the oh. room. Yeah. So it's going to be in there's a, we're building a whole mechanism in the room that's, that's going to make awesome. it. Yeah. It, it, I don't 
don't want to spoil the ending, but it's going to be very, very cool. <laughs> and when, when can uh, fans expect this one? October 1st. October 1st. So Ooh, literally just in time right for Haunt Season. Yep, right oh, in time. Oh, there you go. October 1st. Yep. Be on the lookout. <laughs> You're going to want to see this one. It's going to be crazy. And Geppetto will be the uh, villain. Oh. And it's called Pinocchio, Master of Puppets. I mean, and now you're, and then you include the Metallica song in it. Now I'm in it, so you know I'm, that that sold me right there. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I, I've been seeing the concepts art, the arts for this, the yeah. uh, the posters on on social media. I'm super stoked for this one as well. Uh, another one that I see that you're doing that I'm very stoked for, especially me being a fan of of metal and and rock and roll, is Rock yep. Band. Yeah, talk to me about that because this is a game that I've played growing up for years. Yeah. Now you're actually gonna bring it to life exactly and, into bringing, a whole new thing bringing the game to life that's yeah. literally what i'm doing so you are going around unlocking live instruments to that's play cool. for your show oh, yeah wow. so it is it's really cool i i grew up with you know that style of music rock and roll 70s to 90s rock is yep. like what the whole theme is um you're actually in a full rehearsal studio that's cool. um so when you're here you know the game master comes in and is like like I, we got to get you into your room. You're on in an hour. Like we got to get you to your rehearsal room, and they have to build their set list for the show. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be really cool. Um, I'm super excited about it simply for the fact of I have a huge background in music, right? And um, I went to Berkeley College of Music. Oh, nice. Yeah, so total musician, like life and everything. Right. Um, and I grew up with you know listening to Journey and Queen and like that was that was my dad's you know whole yep. playlist yep. in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I was just like, you know what we could do? I was like, hey dad, you know all those instruments that you bought for me? Well, I don't really use them anymore. Can I use them in my escape room? There it is. So now they're revived again yeah. and brought back to so their I glory. I have a, my whole drum set in there. Like That's we got awesome. my old keyboards in there, like um, full studio, like MIDI keyboard with, um, with the computer. Like it's an elaborate rehearsal studio. And then I'm thinking off time, like people can actually come and book it and to have a rehearsal there studio. You go. Like, yeah. Because it, it is a full studio in there. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So I'm really That's excited. That's a twofer right there. That's yeah, really cool. I, it's, it's, it's my passion. Music is, has always been my passion. And like, cause when I was little, my parents gave me the route of like, do you want to do music or do you want to do acting? Like that was kind of like the, the two choices. And then I ended up choosing music and right. then it's, it's kind of funny that now I just do full-time acting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you're now you're getting the opportunity to bring both those worlds together for yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah, so I get to do both, and so I've been telling everybody, Zoe is my child, but Rock Band is my baby. <laughs> right? No, hundred percent. It's like Zoe is my scary side. Yeah. Rock Band is my music side. Exactly. Then, yeah, and now you have the best of both worlds in one building. Yeah. So, so. and there's a whole vocal booth in there. Like it's wow. yeah, it's, this is gonna it's be really legit. cool. Yeah, it's and it's a single room escape room because it's just a rehearsal studio. Right. So um it's interesting because a lot of times when you go to escape rooms, there are multiple rooms for right. you to explore. But thinking of like I really wanted to just have a full studio. And when you go into a studio you're just in the studio. There's mm -hmm. really nothing more. So I wanted to keep it traditional and like just keep it like as is as a studio. Right. Because um, if I had like an extra room, like what other room would really be in a studio? Uh, I would just the only thing I can think is the producer room. But yeah, like but you like, usually just see the big glass exactly, and that's about it. Big glass. Yeah. So it's like it just made me think of like how authentic I really wanted to make it. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's amazing. I'm, I'm super <laughs> stoked for that. I mean, just seeing that I was like, I can't play instruments, but that will give me the best experience possible. Yeah. To, to and that one opens that next week. Next week. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're doing We're... final testing this weekend. So awesome. It'll be... Can we expect a lot of Easter eggs from all those bands you grew up with yes, in the past a lot of easter eggs That's we have a, a signed poster from steve perry and they're the lead singer of wow. journeys That's yeah awesome. <laughs> yeah we de i definitely grew up with um steve perry my dad is like a huge journey fan that's like, that's like awesome. his band like we just yeah. saw the tribute band like for them the other day and like or like a couple weeks ago and um just like seeing the joy that that brought to my dad like it really brought joy to me too and so i was yeah. like i gotta put hints of that in there there's yeah. a couple hints to zoe in there too so it's awesome kind of <laughs> it all comes full Just circle couple, all comes full circle yeah. so it's like i mean you have a lot on your plate yeah. here i mean and there's more to come and there's more to yeah, come there's more than that that is awesome i, I like to keep myself busy i'm crazy I, <laughs> that's good no busy is always good though busy yeah. like keeps you focused and keeps you motivated and yeah um, what, what is it like now for, uh, for you, as far as the writing process goes for all these, like, how do you come up with stories and, and then what is, what, how does it come from pen to paper to paper to real life? So you're not going to believe me. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, so I lucid dream. 
Yeah. That's it's crazy. The best. It's crazy. And so when I get into creative mode, mm-hmm. I dream through the process of what I'm creating. Wow. And I've done that for all the rooms. Okay. All of them. So when I, at night, when I'm like, like, and I like, it's weird because like, it's, I schedule in like my lucid dreams with, right. versus getting like real sleep. Right. And like, I can switch my, it, it took a lot of practice, but I could switch in my brain to tell myself like, I'm lucid dreaming. Like I need to talk myself through or create really something. Cool, um, and it took a lot of practice, <laughs> but I, I started doing it when I was a kid and it, it started off with sleep paralysis and um, like really bad. Wow. And so I learned how to control it because I didn't want to live with that anymore. And it, I, it took a lot of therapy medications and stuff, but I eventually was like, this is just me. Like it just is who I am. Yeah. Like it's just, and I was eventually able to talk myself through the sleep paralysis and tell myself, you're dreaming. It's okay. And then I could actually physically wake myself up. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And it was very hard. And, uh, but I, I got to that point. And so I decided to use it to my advantage and it's been a life changer for me. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's been crazy. So people ask me all the time, like, Oh, well, like how many times have you played Zoe? I've only played Zoe once. Really? I've only played my old game once. Wow. And the reason why is because every single time that I play that game, I am living through my lucid dream. Right. And then I can't tell the difference between real Reality and, and fake. Yeah. Um. So it has nothing to do with like the actual like game right. or anything like in the game. It just has to do with when I get myself into those positions and when I'm seeing what I'm seeing, cause everything in that room is everything created from my dream. Right. So I got, I found things. I searched for hours for things that I dreamt about for it to look exactly like it looked in my sleep. And, and, and you know what? It's like you said that you can just turn that off and on for yeah. most people. Like I, I know I've had dreams and then I try to write stuff down just to remember what I can write when I mm-hmm. wake up. And even that for me is hard to do. I have notes in my phone that sound crazy. No, it doesn't I look though, like a crazy like, person. No, <laughs> not at all. Like everyone has their own way of how they come up with ideas, how they go about things. I don't come up with ideas until 3 a.m. when I'm laying in bed yeah. in the middle of the night. Just mm-hmm. like, damn, I could go out and film that right now and edit that right now. And that'd be good. And then the next day, like, I'm just like, yeah, I should have done that when I was wide. Yeah. Awake. You know, like I, I, I come up. That's where I come up with the best ideas. It was on 3 a.m., 2 a.m. when yep. I'm scrolling through TikTok or on, <laughs> on Instagram. And I'm thinking about like, that could be a good idea to do. This could be a good idea to do. That person could be fun to interview. And then like. I feel bad because then some people will get emails or notifications yeah. from me at like 3 a.m. And I'm just like, I'm sorry that I'm messaging <laughs> you this awake. late. I'm the same way. I'm just like awake and very active right now. It's just get back to me when you can. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not in a rush, but uh, this is my idea. Um, but yeah, no, I think that that's awesome because in a sense, that kind of means you can essentially, you can shine. Yeah. Like the shining. Yeah. And like that is just, so, I mean, just seeing weird. that, I was just like, wow. That's it's crazy. Awesome. But it works. But hey, <laughs> for me, <laughs> now that's it got out of here and it's literally in the next room mm-hmm. over. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, so and, and it's weird how that happened because like when I would go through like phases, like because I get like seasonal depression mm-hmm. like throughout the year. Um, and I can and I know when it's coming too. Like I can feel it. I'm like, oh, it's like, oh, it's it's itching in. Like I know it's here. Right. But like it it makes it easier for me to be able to just stay home and sleep and just think. Right. Like it, it's, it's like a, such like a negative and a positive at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it also helps that you're your own boss. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So you make your own schedule, you, you know what I mean? And that, that helps a lot. Cause then if you do need that like mental health break or yeah. you do need to just kind of step away for a second or like a day or so, you'd yeah. be like, Hey, I'm not quite feeling it today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stay home today. Just kind of take a little time for myself. And I've had those days. Yeah. And I, I think everyone days. has, like I, I lost, have those days. I lost a lot of friends during the build process of Zoe. Really? And I am rekindling those friendships and everything is much better now. But right. during that process, I isolated myself so much mm-hmm. to where I like pushed everybody away from me. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I like need to focus on this. Right. I'm sorry. Like, I don't have time for you. Like I gotta, I gotta focus on this. And I felt bad doing so, but like, I knew that like I needed to, right. because I needed to get into that headspace of, you know, being able to, and a lot of people got worried about me mm-hmm. and I for a bit got worried about myself. But then I realized like I'm in control of this right? and 
I know that I'm in control of this. Right. So like a lot of like my parents got concerned, but I was like, they, they were the ones that put me in therapy for having sleep paralysis. Right. So it's like, they know that this was like an issue that I had since right. I was a kid. And so, but they're just happy that I now know how to control it. That's, and that, and that is like such a huge thing to say, because I don't think a lot of people in this day and age can comfortably say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of people are still going through yeah. whatever struggles that they're going through and they can't just comfortably say, I can control it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I've talked to a lot of friends in the past that have told me like, sometimes it's hard. And I always tell them, I know it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. But it just takes practice. Practice. Just enough. Just like, even if you have to just get away and be by yourself and just go outside and breathe fresh air exactly. and just enjoy the weather or whatever it may be, whatever your piece is. For me, it's just going and listening to music. One, I, I got playlists for everything, happy, sad. You know, I got a song for everything. Yeah. I got a song, that, you know? And so for me, it's like going and listening to music or going in and editing a video because I can just escape. Yeah. You know? And music speaks. Music yeah. speaks sometimes more than words do. I'm really a does. firm believer in that. So yeah, yeah it's it's crazy how the how, how the world works, but it does take a lot of practice and patience and just really, like you said, self-isolation sometimes and just taking a step back from the world. But it worked out. And it worked out in, in the in best it, way possible. In the best way possible. Yeah. And and I'm I'm happy with how things are. And then I, I but I do give myself breaks. You know, I give myself like time in between. Um, which is why like I didn't build a room for about a year until Zoe. Wow. Um. So I built Zoe, and then it took about a year for me to get these rooms going. Wow. Um, because I needed to take that long for myself. Yeah. No. And then I was ready to get back into it. And when I was ready to get back into it, I was fully into it. And, and that the, 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 the fun part about it is when you are taking that break and then you're starting to get ready to gear back to get mm -hmm. back up. Cause I've done it many times with the channel and it's just that like by week two, I'm already like, damn, I want to get back and do it again. Yeah. Like, but like, I know I need to take that. I need to take that full break. But then when I, if I keep feeling that way leading up to me coming back, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do yeah. this. I'm ready to go. I'm and your motivated. Body speaks to you. It like tells yeah. you like, it's like, we could do this. We dude. Got this. We got this. It's <laughs> you and me versus the world, buddy. We got this, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, I really, you know, and that's what I've, what I've loved with this, you know, overall with this kind of the community is I've gotten mm -hmm. to talk a lot to a lot of people who go through a lot of things, yeah. you know, and, and everyone has their own, own stuff. Um, own stuff going on in the world and, and, and in life. And it's just to see everyone. The one thing that I see that brings everyone together is Halloween. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And especially during the Halloween season, that's when everyone feels the most alive because that's where the, everyone feels the most comfortable. And yeah. what, you can look at someone and not judge them for a month. You know what yeah. I mean? Because the, the world is such a judgmental place. It really is. And I love the community so much. I love the people that continue to come out and cosplay. Me too, yeah. I saw so many great cosplays this past weekend at Midsummer Screen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just to see everyone in, in such joy there, such just having a great time. Like, yeah. That's what it's all about. And I'm so happy that it's starting to stretch out year round now. Yeah, you know? no, me so. too. And and I, 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 was, I was at Midsummer. I only had time to go Sunday. I was, right. I wanted to go more, but I only had time to go Sunday. Um, But I... <laughs> I put contacts in for the first time in like six months or so. Right. And my eyes were burning the oh, entire no. time. <laughs> and my eyes were so blurry. And I kept putting salines. I put put the saline solution drops in. Right. It didn't help. But I was like, I want to stick this out because I don't want to take them out because I want to <laughs> look so cool. But then I was like, I'm probably going to go blind after this. But <laughs> worth it. Um, so I couldn't really see many people like there. So like people would come up to me and be like, hey. And I'm like, hey. And then I'd be like, Okay, let me adjust my eyes real quick. Who are you? <laughs> You're like, I can't so see. And I couldn't see. But then I was like, and then I'd hear their voice and I'd be like, oh, okay, I know who this is. Right. But then like from far away, people would be like, I got a lot of messages and I like, I saw you. And I was like, I didn't see you. I didn't you. see you. <laughs> you have no idea what I was going through. <laughs> But I was glad to at least be there. Right. And I got some cool goodies for the escape room too. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And that's, that a, and that's yeah. what I love about the, the, as we see a lot of people from the industry go out and shopping, yeah. you know what I mean? That's where you get a lot of the best people, oh, best yeah. vendors. I got so many stuff. business cards for masks and props and everything. Yeah. And like, I just, I love it. Cause it's like, if I'm going to get something, I want to get it from a small business that right. does haunt community stuff. Like I don't want to get it off of Amazon or like yeah. whatever. Like I want to get it from an actual like haunt business. And like, um, I, 
just got some stuff from a uh, sinister slider gear. Okay. And like, cause I just, I just love, you know, being in the community and like yeah. just buying stuff that like, I know is like handmade and like somebody put like their effort into making this, yep. you know, I, I just, I appreciate that so much, you know, That's and like, the best. yeah. And it's like, yeah. if I'm going to use it, I want it to be like good quality, but like handmade by somebody that actually cared about it and that's what know? i loved i me me and my girlfriend love collecting like stickers and artwork yeah yeah and you see tons of that different styles different like ways of creating the characters that you've never seen in a different light mm -hmm. you know what i mean there was this one i couldn't remember i i bought a print from him last year and it was a really cool like i loved his colors the way he painted it and everything it was a daft punk print and then this year he had a really cool killer clowns from outer space print oh that's cool and the, but like it looked evil like that was probably the scariest i've ever seen him because it was like the 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 colors were all like different than what you've seen for the killer yeah. clowns and all their eyes were red oh that's cool like i was like oh my god so you just see so many talented people there yeah. and there's just so much like you said there's so much stuff to buy like so much stuff i, was I could go if i had my entire check paycheck and i didn't have to pay any bills i could go broke <laughs> and i was just like i'm like okay where am i gonna put all this stuff yeah. i just bought so much i bought so much this that's weekend. a lot of fun but uh, i'm excited to use it i got like a cool like a uh, scent machine too okay so um that'll be pretty cool because i wanted to i wanted to have like a eerie smell but not a bad smell because if it's a bad smell i can get kind of like nauseating after a bit but i wanted like a lingering like haunted mansion-esque smell and i oh, found that's one the, that's the like, best yes. yeah <laughs> and everyone knows and i've always said it before haunted mansion will always be that that one attraction that yep. started it all oh yeah you know what i mean if it wasn't for that attraction in 1955 when it launched yeah. like i don't think anybody in the haunt community not scary farm anybody would be where they are today yeah no it's crazy because i so long long story short i have um a lot of family involved okay. with like haunt stuff and theme parks in general right my uh great my great great uncle was the original um band leader for the disneyland band back in 1955 awesome. yeah so like and then his um son uh tommy walker okay was um he my my great uncle mm -hmm. um was actually he created the ice the original ice show at knots wow um and he also had a hand in starting not scary farm wow yeah that's so, huge small world like yeah. and, and, and so i it's kind of in my blood it's in your blood yeah 100%. like in a sense um so and that's it's i didn't i didn't know this story until i actually started working at knots and my dad sat me down he was like he was like i knew someday we were gonna have this talk <laughs> So let's talk. So let's talk about um, it. So he was like, it's just, it, it's so crazy because like, how did I get into that? Right. You know? And it was just like, how did I have like that eagerness to go and do that? And so my dad was like, so funny story. And I was <laughs> like, you have a relative, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like told me the whole story. That's hilarious. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this. <laughs> I didn't even know this. Like, I was like, what? You're like, I just signed up to do haunt yeah, just to do exactly. haunt. And like, just all of a sudden, I have a family member that like started the whole thing. Like, I was awesome. like, what? So yeah, it's kind of funny. And, um, but I have a lot of like, I have obviously a lot of love for Not Scary Farm because that's where I, that's where I started in all right. this. That's where, that's where like, I, and I learned so much that like, I just was like ready to do my own thing, just right. ready for it. After five years of being there and I just, I actually, I tried for venue supervisor a couple of times, um, but I think that it just wasn't my time mm -hmm. yet. Um, so it gave me the sign that it's time for me to do my thing right. and have it be ex successful. Right. And um, I think that I've proven myself so many things. Like I was so nervous opening you know, this room. And I was just, I was overthinking and like, is it going to be good? People are going to like it, you know? And then all of a sudden that, that one day in January, we went viral on TikTok. That's all it takes. And that was the moment for me where I was like, holy crap. Uh, uh, you know, it's the same with me. Like, I'll tell you this, like there's one video that I am very cringed about that is on my channel, but it's my highest viewed video. And I don't know how it keeps getting views. It's currently sitting, I think almost at like 250,000 views. And I'm just like, that's all it took. I yeah. was like, no, just putting it out there. It was just a history of Jason Voorhees. Oh, that's literally what is blowing up. Like, and I'm just like, yeah. Sense. And I'm just like, that is continuing what built like grows my channel every time i'm just like i'm not mad about it but at the same time i'm just curious yeah. like yeah. okay what well, grabs people's attention yeah like what was it about this video like I, and i go back and rewatch it and i'm just like 
I mean, I'm stuttering a lot in this video and I'm just like, it, the, the editing's not the greatest. Like yeah. I'm my biggest critic. Like, and, and that's, and, and that's everyone, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm my biggest critic. Like I can't, I, 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 I don't like to rewatch my videos. Yeah. And I think that's just due to sense. Cause I'm spending all the time editing them. Yeah, so like, like I'm listening to the sound of your own voice. I'm constantly <laughs> like just, and then when my girlfriend will put them on the background while we're just doing stuff, I'm like, can you like put on something else, please? Like, yeah. I appreciate you, the support and I appreciate oh. you giving me the view. <laughs> I just don't like listening to myself. I was like, I love filming the content. I love releasing the content. I love editing the content. I just don't like rewatching my yeah, content. Yeah, rewatching it back. I get that. But yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm my biggest critic. Like I go back and rewatch stuff and I'm just like, I could have done that better. I could have done this yep. better. I could have done this better. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's just like, okay, it's like, I can't dwell in the past. Now I got to just go and just be a better person. In the yeah, next exactly. Video. You know, like, just, what can I do better in the next one? Next time. Yeah. Exactly. So. That's what I stress on my staff because every once in a while they want to go in the room and try something different. They have to get approval by me for first before they want right. to try something new um and then we practice it but if it doesn't work it doesn't work like it's fine if it doesn't it, we'll 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 try something new you that's know? why like, i always say like what's the worst i could say no yeah you know it's yeah, like okay you just, gotta, just go back to the drawing it. board because my rule is that as long as it's something safe and in a secure and controlled environment and you practice it and you have somebody that's willing to practice with you sure give it a sure. try let's try it out give it a try do a test run yeah if it doesn't work we don't have to do it again but it's at fun. least we could say we tried we it tried and it. It, it didn't work so, so there's we been a on. lot of groups that you know uh, have gone through and they've gotten something that no one else has ever had mm -hmm. and they might find it extremely scary but either a maybe it just doesn't flow within our timeline maybe it just right. doesn't work within the room maybe it just took too long to do maybe it just didn't give the the effect that we wanted it to but at the end of the day they gave it a go and that's that's what matters to me and like my actually my the first video that we had posted on tiktok that had uh gone viral we had a beta it was our it was a beta test for additional actors okay um and it was the first return of zoe reborn after krampus because we did krampus for christmas right. which i redesigned the entire room for that that's awesome <laughs> i'm crazy <laughs> No, it's you're, so worth it. it's so worth I it. would say creative genius. <laughs> That's the word I would use. <laughs> Both. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, and, and I was, it was the first time that we brought four actors on wow. one group. And I was like, we, we already started posting a little bit on TikTok at that point. I was like, I'm going to post this one because this was funny because one guy, we're not, you're not supposed to climb on furniture, but one guy did. And... <laughs> And uh, it was just funny. And it was just like, I mean, I, I didn't even know anybody in the group. Right. I mean, I know, I know some of them now. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know anybody at that time who had played. And it's so funny because like Nico, who played in that beta group now works for Crescent <laughs> So it's just so funny how things happen. But um, I just took a chance and posted it. And I was like, this is funny. I thought it was funny. So maybe other people will. And it got 23.5 million views. Wow. Yeah. The world of TikTok million. is a very interesting, like, interesting one. What? And I was yeah. just like, but the, the fact that got people like, like crazy about it was people being dragged across the floor. It wasn't necessarily being grabbed. It right. wasn't necessarily being touched by somebody. It was the fact that they were being dragged out from under the And table. that's what I'm excited for tonight, to be honest with yeah. you. I'm a big guy, so like, <laughs> I, am do so, <laughs> I am so excited to see how this goes. I, I might even go to the thing like, hold on, hold on. I will get on the floor for you. I will let you drag me. Just let me lay down comfortably, and then you can do what you gotta do. <laughs> Part of the rules is staying low. So staying low, uh, okay. It uh, works out. Yeah. That's gonna be a big out. disadvantage for me. <laughs> stay low. Stay low. Stay low. Six foot six. Stay low. Yeah. Oh exactly my girlfriend however <laughs> she's the tiny one so she'll she'll have oh, no problem with it so <laughs> um no i i i think that uh i i i'm also watching the tiktoks all the time i'm yeah. watching your stories all the time they're hilarious to me it's so funny and yeah. it's like i i if i find it funny i hope that somebody else does but like at the end of the day you never know you never know we've yeah. gotten some videos that only got you know ten thousand views and we yeah. got some videos that have like two hundred fifty thousand views and then we got that that like big one. And then, um, one of my staff members, uh, Jacob had come to me and he said, I have a new video for you. And this one's going to go viral too. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> and he was like, I am 100% positive. This one's going to go viral. And I was like, all right, okay. I'll post it. Like what's the harm in posting it? Right. I posted it the way that he edited it and I posted it. And then that one got 19 point something million views. Wow. And I was like, 
what the heck? They, like, it's just so funny to me. I'm still trying to figure out TikTok. Like, I just know how to send videos and watch them and like and maybe throw a comment every now and then. That's yeah. about it. It's, I don't know. It's complicated. I can edit on my computer fine, but then when I start going on these apps and edit, I'm like, this is, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. I mean, I did some minimal research right. on like what to do as far as for like posting. Yeah. And apparently you're supposed to post at like 3 a.m. our time here. Wow. Because at 6 a.m. in the East Coast is when people are waking up, getting ready for work. Right. So, and what's the first thing that you usually do when you wake up? You Go scroll on your, on your phone for a little mm -hmm. bit, like whether it's in 30 minutes or an hour, or however long it's while, while you wake you up. You check your phone. You check your phone. Every morning. And so, you know, the, by that point, even though it has no effect on us for social media wise, you're at least gaining traction on the East Coast. You're getting the views. And so the more views that you get and the more shares that you get, the more that they are pushing out your video. Right. Towards, um, you know, other viewers. Right. So by the time that people are then waking up over here at that 6 to 7 a.m. time to get ready for work over now here. Now they're doing their turn. They're getting the traction that yeah. the East Coast started. Right. So it's like, it's a whole thing. It and is. And like the certain hashtags that you use. Yeah. What's trending at the time. I think that's and my problem. Like, I don't, I'm too lazy to write the hashtag. Hashtag. So yeah, I'm like, right? hashtag this, hashtag that. I know. Hashtag, I'm, just I'm like, just like, okay. I just need to so make a list on Google Docs. Copy and, and paste. Copy it. and paste it. Yeah. <laughs> and then add in a couple of new ones that yeah. are trending at the time. Yeah. But it, it it's interesting because I was never, I mean, I'm like social media. I like, you know, viewing and posting and whatever, but I was never like a social media promoter right. at all. So it helped me a lot, actually, because uh, when we joined with Escape Room Era, mm -hmm. um, the owner, his name's David. He's really cool. Um, and him and I just started talking about like ideas and stuff like for marketing right. and like what we wanted to do. And he had um, a background in the business of escape rooms already because he's been established since 2017. Right. So he knew about insurance, payroll. I mean, we have a completely separate insurance than he does. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, as far as for like, but he knew the ins and the outs and like right. business wise how to process a payroll, how to do this, where to find employees. Like I had no clue. So something I wish they would teach in high school. Right. They, like they I, did, I, I, when I got out of high school, I'm like, how do I submit my tax form? How right. do I get a driver's license? Exactly. Like, like, how do I do any of this stuff? No like clue. I had one class that was probably the most beneficial to me. And that was, uh, no, I had two, three classes. It was graphic design, video production, and business math. Yeah. That was literally like, yeah. okay, that prepared me for my life. That makes a sense. Bit, a, little, you know? a little bit. Give you a yeah. little bit of a help. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have guests coming in. So there's, she's in the oh, restroom. No they're, problem they at have all. A, they're going to go It's a working right set, now. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's just crazy because I, I had no idea about any of that stuff. So having his help, um, which he has um, a couple of family friendly, um, a teen room and his version of a scary room. Okay. Um, it's, it's not as intense as Zoe. It is a no contact room, but it's more like a And that's the one in Anaheim. Right. Yeah, it's yeah in down the street from Camelot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we went to that one to do one of the escape rooms, which was like breaking out of the principal's office detention. Yeah, yeah. Principal ended up being something more. I won't spoil it because I want you guys to go see that one. That's a fun little couple one, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, when we walked into the building, first and foremost, when, when I walked into the building, I was like, this looks like an office. Mm -hmm. And then I walked in the building and I immediately heard screaming. I'm like, this is not an office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because with escape rooms, we try to find the cheapest rent possible, to be honest. Like, oh, 100 percent. It's a business. Like, but I like it because it. it's in Cognito, yeah, and it's like exactly. you would never think. You don't know you don't know what's in there. Yeah. And then you walk in and then it's like a complete set design. A hundred percent. And you're like, wait, like, isn't this an office building? Yeah, <laughs> like oh my I'm like so uh, Zoe was a financial <laughs> office before. Uh, really? Yeah, was it, was, it, really? it was a financial office for like 20 years. And then they ran out of business and then they left. Did they leave and, around COVID time? Was that around the yeah, time? Yeah, like right, right around that time. Yeah. And then, so they had shut down. Um, and then I think that they relocated, but just to like a smaller venue out right. in Fullerton. Um, but yeah, so they, this, this whole 2,500 square foot building was open and I was like, let's do it. Let's make some let's fun. Let's it. make some magic. And so it was just an open, you know, floor plan. It was mm. literally just a huge room. That's it. Wow. There was, um, there was a couple of in individual offices, which now we use as the game master office and my personal office. Right. Um, but, um, as far as for like itself, like the walls, like were completely built That's awesome. um, and they're not uh, technically they're not walls. They're called partitions. So the way that you can, um, we, you'd have to get blueprints and you do have to get approved by the city. Right. 
but in order to make it so that you don't have to have like um i mean you still have to get fire inspections but they don't have to physically send it off to the city right because it's not a full wall right. it's a partition um so that's kind of like a little little way of getting around it um as long as you don't have wires throughout the walls and you're there's pretty much loopholes. good to go there's yeah there's so loopholes. many and like just to make it so that we were able to get open and then right. eventually i did get the fire inspection about a month later after opening but i was so eager to open i was like i'm not waiting i, I remember <laughs> uh when we like because when I when I first started following you, the one picture that I love that you have on your Instagram is you holding the keys. Yeah, that was like to me right there. I, I could see genuinely how happy you are in that it picture. Was such a surreal, and how, like and how much of a like like a wow, this is it. We're doing this. Like Did it. we're going. We, yeah. we got boots on ground now. Now it's time. That to That moment build. that I got the approval because I was I was scared I wasn't going to get approved. Cause really, I. I had just gotten, I just moved and I had just gotten a new car <laughs> and my credit wasn't the best at the time because I was, you know, I just ran it like three or four times because right. I was look, I was, when I was looking for a car, I ran my finances a couple times on a couple different dealerships. And right. so it was, it had gone down and it wasn't horrible, but you know, not the best. Yeah. And so I was just so nervous. I was like, they're not going to approve me. <laughs> and then so, you got the approval. And then I got the approval. And Man. that moment that that email came in, I was like, your heart probably sank. Oh my God, this is happening. Yeah. I was like, there's no way this is happening right now. <laughs> and what was the reaction to like all your loved ones, all your people? Oh friends, my God. I, I broke the news to them and everybody was ecstatic. That's awesome. Everybody was ecstatic because my parents, man, they are such supporters of me. And that's They're amazing. They're such supporters of like whatever I want to do and whatever makes me happy. And it's it's incredible to have their, you know, their like back on this. Right. And like I think that throughout like when I was when I was a teenager, I was very much so the girl that like didn't know what she necessarily wanted to do. Didn't know. I, feel that. I was very yeah. much so like like, you know, like when they ask you like in kindergarten versus like you know, when you're in like sixth grade, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. It was always, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be a singer. Like, that's all I wanted to do. Right. And then like, but when it got to the point of when I went to music college, I just felt like something was missing. Something wasn't like, yeah, I could sing all day. But yeah. Like, do I need to go to college to sing? Right. Probably not. I, I, I have a nice loud concert in my car all the time when I'm going to my girlfriend's <laughs> right. house. I'll, I'll, and I'll yell and scream it like I'm in front of 50,000 people at sold out forum or something like that. In reality, it's all my yeah, head. I'm it, stuck in traffic. No, right? <laughs> but you're having a full on concert. Oh, yeah, I'm having you're a great the time. Character. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm Ozzy Osbourne. Sometimes I'm uh, Bruce Dickinson. Sometimes I'm Bon Scott. Who knows? You know, it's like I'm a little better than everybody. Depends on the day. <laughs> yeah. Mondays. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And so I was just like, and then eventually I found my thing and I felt like so happy to be able to bring something to life because I genuinely was just like, what do I do? And how do I do it? Mm -hmm. And then meeting David and having him really help with like getting like started was so cool. The whole entire build team. I had, I had employees come and help me build. That's awesome. And it's, it was just so hectic during that time. I built the entire thing in, in four months. Wow. We were here every day long I slept, hours i slept I'm, here yeah i was like, gonna say spending i had the night. an air mattress set up in my office and i was here day and night and i we did nothing but build 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 and that's all i that's could focus awesome. on and it was just it was nuts because i knew that i could do it but then like that first paying customer that walked into the door i was like this is happening. That's and awesome. since then, Zoe has gone through a lot of changes. I started off with the original vibe of like, I don't even know how to explain it. I had a lot of, like a lot, of, like the music was completely different. Mm -hmm. um, it started off as like more string work, um, like kind of like insidious style Ooh, string work. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't fit. And I sat there and cause I was like, this isn't hype enough. Right. It's not, it's not what I wanted. And I, I want, it was definitely a more assertive and, and aggressive. I think like, I mean, as far as for like any escape room around, mm -hmm. but if you were to see the room from August when we opened to now, it is 100% different. Really? Puzzle, puzzles have changed and uh, stuff has changed. The scenery has stayed the same, but moments that have happened have changed um, simply because I just felt like something's missing something's missing something's missing and then i would go home do my little 
sleepy time ritual. There you go. <laughs> and then I'd come back to work and be like, I found what we're going to do. Yeah. And then I'd do it. And um, there's a lot of situations where I know people do feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but they're safe. Right. And but then it gets into their head and then that's when they tap. That's when they tap is when they they think, well, what is going to happen to me next? And then they tap. It's not necessarily what is happening to them at the current moment. Right. It's the unknown of what's next. Uh -huh. And um, I, I've come to find that the hype, I've added a lot more intense music, a lot more um, some video game music okay. that is familiar to people. Okay. And the reason why I did that was because a lot of people are like, oh, well, you just use video game music. And I, and I was like, but they're not understanding why. So now every time that they hear that song, they're going to think. You know how many video Zoe game Reborn. songs traumatize me and I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't mm -hmm. believe I'm hearing that song mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. The late nights I've spent, like, example, Black Ops Zombies. Yeah. Growing up playing that. <laughs> uh, the thing, the first one that comes to mind is the uh, in Black Ops 2, I think, was the bus station map and yep. hearing the opening score of that. And every time hearing that, I'm like, you know, the nights I've spent yep. the hours I've put in to try to complete hours. the Easter eggs and just <laughs> died when we're close to being done. <laughs> Like that's the trauma that it's not it's not even a horror thing. It's just the trauma of me almost finishing it and I just cut it and now I gotta hear that. Who it was, but I it was it was an old friend of mine. He had me run around the bus to like distract while he could like, <laughs> yeah kill all this. Oh my god, running around the bus. <laughs> like I, I I was like you know how you know how many nights I've freaking fallen off the bus on accident and just been pissed because then I'm the reason why we went down. Like, oh my God. And there's so many video games that I, I hear music and I'm like, I don't want to hear, hear that song again. Yeah. And at the same time, it's just like, that's what reminds me of like, yeah, I remember actually, I, even though I was stressed and annoyed, but I remember having fun playing. Mm -hmm. game, exactly. You know? Exactly. And like, if you ever were to pick up that game again, you, it would, you would just think of the song. Yeah. So like, I just really wanted to have like things that would like make people go, oh, like I know that. Yeah. And then every and then they go home and eventually if they play that game someday, then they're gonna think, remember that time we went to that escape room and they played this played song? This song, yeah. You know, like and I and I just I thought that that would be so fun. And like it is it's only little snippets. It's not like right. full length songs. It's little snippets. But, but it's you, enough where people go, you know that movies and video games, <laughs> in my opinion, always have some of the best scores. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And and a nice score is like you can't do either without it. Yeah. That's like what we, is literally your background of your of whatever you're trying to sell. Exactly. We have some Outlast. We have some Doom. Oh. We have. Oh, don't uh, tell me Doom because then I think Doom and I think of that metal soundtrack and then I just get hyped and I'm like, yep. I'm killing everybody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's, yeah. it, not only does it hype the guests, but it hypes the actors. And yeah. they're like, let's go. You know? Uh, there's like one specific track where it just goes hard. Yeah. I'm just like in the first Doom game that the one they did in 2014. And it just goes hard. And I remember when me, my cousin, and my and my other cousin, we would spend the night, we put that on, and we'd just be headbanging. Yeah. Just like we wouldn't even be playing the game. We were just headbanging to the music. We're like, bro, wait for the drop. No, it was just headbanging. Exactly. Like it was exactly. just so fun. It's so fun. Yeah. And it brings back like memories of that. And like I really wanted to have that. So I added some of that into the room. Um, I'm a big Ice Nine Kills and Sullivan King fan. Okay. Those are like my top two. Um, and bad omens. I don't have okay. any bad omens in the room though. But <laughs> Um, uh, big fans. Um, Ice of Nine both Kills of them. is a perfect vibe for. Oh yeah. Too. Oh, a hundred percent. So some of those like drops and stuff, like we have a couple of. So you'll you'll recognize a couple of songs in there. Right. Um, just because like I just feel like it like brings everything like so full circle, and the hype of Sullivan King is just like that's my guy. <laughs> like, right. I, I love him. Um, and uh, but it's kind of cool because like for instance, um, one of my employees, Matt. Um, you know Matt. Yeah. Um, he just saw Spencer at. Midsummer. Midsummer, yeah. yeah. He was walking around. He was like, he's in the Hall of Shadows. I'm like, and I'm busy in panels today. <laughs> it's like texting me. And every single time I'd be like, I'll be right there. He was gone. And I was like, no. Um, but I'm just, I'm such a big fan. But Matt actually was like, I got to say something because if I don't, like, I'm going to regret it. So he literally went up to him and he was like, we have your songs in this escape room. I would love for you to come play. Here's a flyer. And he literally screenshotted. Uh, Spencer uh, just screenshotted my profile like on Instagram. He was like, I'll send her a DM. Like, we'll set up a game. Wow. And I was like, please. <laughs> that's going to be uh, that's gonna be something you're going to have to have a camera crew come down oh, and yeah. like, film the entire oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Like, no, it'll be so that fun. That right there, I'd be happy to come down and film a marketing for you for that. That'd be so cool. Because that's how you can market the game right oh, there. Oh, right? 100%. And, not, and not only that, but just being able but to, to have like have the pride. Yeah, the pride of yeah. like, 
hey, I have your songs like in here. And he, and, um, he even said, he was like, thank you for putting my music in there. Like, I really appreciate that. Yeah. That like somebody, He's a big fan. yeah. He and he was haunt. like, that's so cool that you put the music in there. Right. And, and Matt was just like, yeah, like, you know, like, and Christina would love to meet you. Like, she's a huge fan. And I was like, maybe oh we can God. also get him to sign something for rock band. Right. Yeah. You know no, I mean? exactly. That'd be awesome. So cool. And, and like, it's just like, it's, it's about the connections that you make. And like, I just feel like that's so cool. And, um, it's just like, you never know. Yeah. You never know like what could happen here at Escapade. We've had a lot of celebrities here. We've had a lot actually. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Angelina Jolie, her kids. No have shit. Come. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. And she is she is Laura Croft. You had, like she you had Mrs. Smith here, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. One of the she Eternals in, was here. She came in wearing high heels and switched out her shoes into tennis shoes. She's and a, she was like, I'm ready to go. She's a champion. Yeah. She's ready to go. One of my favorite movies of her is Wanted. Oh yeah. I love Wanted so yeah. much. Like, and, and it's so good. Just like her, but that that's her entire personality. Like yeah. she literally held up a door with her, with her leg. Like she had it like up it. in the air and I believe it. holding the door shut with her leg. And I was like, uh. <laughs> and she yeah. just came in and, and at first and, and what a life she's had like she oh, survived yeah. breast cancer you know what i mean like absolutely all the crazy kids, all her kids like she is just like <laughs> she's like the probably one of the number one moms yeah. out there you know what about i mean about her kids it's so funny they they came in and did saboteur mode and saboteur mode is i've when, heard about this yeah so saboteur mode is when we kill you off in the game and then you just go missing so oh. her kids played this mean prank on her and we had to drag her children children one by out, one one out. by one oh, oh out of the room. <laughs> and she i mean her bodyguard was there so like she knows like right. nothing was actually happening but she it was so funny watching her reaction of like i knew something was happening i knew you were all up to something. Kids, yeah don't. it was so funny <laughs> and so i just i was that's such a good moment for me and like we've had um we had Ariana Grande and her brother Frankie Grande. Ooh, you had, yeah, and I'm so excited to see her in Wicked. Yeah, oh I'm my a massive gosh, theater fan. Oh so man, like, I, that, and they actually look like they took the time and made a good Wicked. Really, made I've seen that good. show twice, and yeah. it's so phenomenal. Oh yeah, no, it's great, yeah. and I think I think she's gonna do it justice. I, I think, think so. a lot of people were worried. She looks so funny. I'm not gonna come. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> right, I know. And then as soon as you see that trailer, you're like, oh yeah, okay. And especially maybe. when they showed yeah. my favorite thing in that whole thing is is the grand reveal of the wizard. Yeah. And then they when they showed his face and everything, yeah. I was like, "This is going to be cool. It's going to be, be good. good. I'm super excited for it. It's one of my favorite. I, like, pro- I honestly started tearing up just watching the trailer because oh, I, yeah. I, I I teared up watching the actual show. Just hearing Defying Gravity on there, it's like, yeah, just oh, to man, hear this like, is happening. Yeah, this they is talked it. about this for how many years? And now they're finally doing it. I like Universal, being in eighth grade, be hearing like that they were going to be doing. Yeah, it and then movie. it's the billboards just been sitting in Universal for like yeah. years. When you pass the studio tour, yeah. it's like Wicked coming soon. I'm like, when? Yeah, okay, but now it's coming. Like now it is finally this. December almost here my dad's stoked my dad got me into wicked he, oh yeah he loves wicked so yeah I, I'm so stoked but that's awesome Ariana yeah. Grande coming through how was she and was she terrified I'm so terrified yeah so scared and it, what's funny is that um because we went to go play project minotaur and uh i i i was supposed to go this this day but i ended up going on another day but uh she was she was the group to play after the my friend's group that went to go play That's project awesome. minotaur so she just i guess really enjoys Loves it rooms. right yeah. now yeah so, I mean, it's, it's huge for everyone you know it's what i mean getting it's, so much more popular than it yeah. was because it's like not only because when you do a haunt you can really do it during September, October. But when you do an escape room, escape rooms are known to be year round. Right. So it's like, you, it, it's just, it's technically a year round haunt, but it's also an escape room. So if you're looking to go solve some puzzles, like it is a lot of fun and more immersive. Yeah. And um, more hands on in my opinion. Yeah, no, so, exactly. Literally. <laughs> yeah. It's literally more hands on. You're literally doing and touching things and solving puzzles with yeah. your hands and everything. No, so, it yeah. is. And like, I got into escape rooms back actually during COVID is when I got into escape rooms because it was one of the only only things that were open um they did private groups wear a mask hand sanitize but it was private groups right and so you can go in and you can be with your group and your party wow. wearing a mask and you can go and play the game that's so fun. um they didn't ha- they shut down all the live actor rooms so they did um but um they did have like standard escape rooms open and that's when i really started getting into it and before you know it i had done a hundred a hundred of them at that point and now i'm at like 150 I haven't had as much time to play any lately just because of here. <laughs> yeah, no, but, you're busy. Trust yeah. me. And you got a lot coming your way. Yeah. So, but I, I just loved them. Yeah. And, and I was just like, it's so much fun, like physically being able to do something. And like in my group, I'm the finder. I'm like, oh, I found this, I found this, I found this. And okay, now use it. Like that's, that's my job. Right. Um. Everybody fe- like, especially when you do more escape rooms with like your friends, like you find out like 
that you have like a position yep for your stuff yep. <laughs> and um like you're either like the puzzle solver or you're the finder or you're just the observer and like that's okay yeah because you're there just to have a good time so my girlfriend she's like so you know she's so observant about things so mm -hmm. she'll start noticing things even before they start the clock she's like yeah. this 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 and this we'll get a look at this i'm like mm -hmm. okay um i'm with you yeah i, I will follow you 100 percent. i trust that's how i started to yeah and, uh, like looking at like set designs and stuff like yeah oh, how'd they do that like that's yeah. so cool you know and like um it's it's very interesting looking back on like little me playing escape rooms and being like now I have my own because like I yeah. I kind of like always wanted to right off the get go right but I didn't know like how, how and like about it what I wanted now. to do and like that so going back to that moment of like holding the keys outside that door was like surreal this is happening yeah like. No way right now. <laughs> no, it's like sea psych. <laughs> so oh, like, and, and, <laughs> and rightfully so. I mean, I like I said, I've I've continued to hear, hear so much great things about this this escape room, um, and then I continue to see the advertisements coming soon of other ones, of ones that are already open. Mm -hmm. And I love it that, like I like I said in the beginning, this is these escape rooms. Like there is something for everyone here. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to get scared, cool. Try Rock Band or try the Invention Room. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like you want a little history lesson, go to the invention room. Trust me, you'll get some good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. You know, research was done. If you want to have that music experience, go to there. Or do you want to get scared and in, be in, immersed into a horror film? Exactly. We have two options for you. Exactly. You know, you don't want to be touched. We have an option in, in, in Pinocchio that is like that. So yeah. you can enjoy it and just get scared but not be touched or yeah. you know, anything. Like there is something for everyone here. There really is. And like I didn't think that I was going to be honestly I didn't think I was going to be expanding so quickly right. I didn't but then after so we got very successful um and this lot right here it was um it was an insurance company and um she, the lady who worked here with her husband they decided that they were going to retire um and they were going to be i think moving to like texas or something like that yeah. so they were going to be out of here um and so they actually came to us first wow. over there and said you know hey we're going to be leaving it's open. Um, it's open. Yeah. And it's, you know, 1700 square feet. And if you would like it, we would love for you to have it. Be the first and, dibs on yeah, it. That's awesome. Get first dibs. And so I was able to get us a really good rent rate too. Sweet. Because it was like, it was almost like a transfer. Right. Um, I did have to pay the current, you know, unit rate or whatever. But um, as far as for like space itself, like... I because the property manager then did not have to pay for any advertisements, did not have to pay for so they gave me three months free. Wow. So I was able to get, you know, the three months to get established over here. And um then by that by that point, now we just we just hit the three months at that month and a half ago, right when we opened invention room. Right. So it gave us enough time to open up invention room, be about halfway done with rock band at the time and break ground on Pinocchio. Nice. So it gave us enough time to get that going oh that yeah i mean that's awesome now you know you uh, and the thing i love about the story that i heard today from from your perspective of things is um you took a chance on yourself mm -hmm. there was just a, a moment where you were just kind of fed up with what was going on in the hot world as far as like what was going on with you and stuff mm -hmm. and you were just like i want to do my own thing yeah i want to i want to create my own stuff for those who in the future are you know the the next generation up and coming what what's some advice you would give on someone on taking a chance on yourself and just going for it? Yeah, honestly, sometimes like my my best phrase is sometimes you have to make yourself uncomfortable to be comfortable. Right. It is something that you kind of just have to just go for and do and really not care about anybody's opinion and just do it. Like it's and I know that it's easier said than done. It is a hundred percent. But the moment that you just kind of just like okay, I'm, my eggs are all in this basket. You know, I'm ready to go. And, you know, you meet connections and you network and you just honestly, genuinely be a good person at two, you yeah. know, like uh, then so much can go for you. Exactly. Like so much can, can just like, oh, I, I will say I've been very blessed and very lucky with a lot of things happening to just kind of fall in place for me, but I've still had struggles. Right. I still have. And like, there's a couple, like there's, there's loans that I got denied for. And there's like, there's stuff that like, wasn't able to happen. Um, because like my insurance didn't kick in right away. Right. And like, I was actually planning to open in July, but we ended up didn't, didn't open till August, like because of delays and right. like, there's, there's, there's lots of setbacks. A lot like, of speed bumps in the road. Yeah. Stuff, a yeah. lot of speed bumps. And like, I, 
um, I, I want to get to the point of where I open up more immersive stuff. Yeah. And like literally like, and this is the, this, this is the state to do it. in SoCal yeah. is known for the oh, scene. A hundred percent. And, and like just literally yesterday I went, I want to put people in a van and I want to take them to a random location and give them a one-on-one immersive experience. And so yesterday I bought a van. Holy shit. That is going to be awesome. There's another game in the works and that's just a teaser. You're going to have to stay tuned. Yeah. So, but sometimes you just have to do it. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Can, You're like on the bright side. I got a van. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and I, and I have been decided to open a flower shop soon like that's what all these this decorations for right here that's awesome so like i just i don't know like if something fails like that's okay like i'll figure it out yeah. you know like and it's and i just want to try different things and see like what i want to do like well on the bright side you can always say like you said if it fails you're like well at least i tried it i yeah, know where, where it took it. me i know what it was i know the experience of what it took to mm-hmm. do it now i can move on and try something new. and i can learn my lesson yeah i can you can and, like okay how do i apply this to the next business mm-hmm. i go for you know how, what do, I mean? I, like, how do i how do i do this because like the 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 fact of it that I was thinking about is like, well, if I do a flower shop, I'll probably need a van anyways. And if I want to do an immersive experience with the van, then I'll just use the van for that. Like it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. And it's like, it, it's to the point of where it's like, if I don't do it, then somebody else will, you know? And if, and if somebody else does, will they do it as well as I thought that I could? And like, will they do it justice? Right. And so if anybody's to do it, it's going to be me. That's yeah. like, that's kind of like my mentality on things. And that's like, awesome. I, I'm very, very blessed and fortunate with honestly, TikTok and the advertisements that we've had, because it really has helped us soar a lot. And that was just a lucky chance thing that was just happened. Like I, I didn't know what to expect by posting. Gotta love the world of social media, man. Yeah. It just, it blows up when you least expect it. Yeah. And then just, you know, staff from knots just begging to work here and to the point of where i had to turn people well, away you, well, you gave them an opportunity to now do what they love to do year yeah, round year round yeah. and they love it like they, it's so funny to me like obviously like i want their best financial in mind but right. they left their jobs to come and work here <laughs> and open up their availability to be here they love it and they love it that much and it's like and i imagine during haunt they're doing double duties man yeah. whether they're on their off days they're coming yep, here, they're on here. Their, on their freaking then they go back and they already their planned shift. it they're yeah. ready to go because we're during halloween we're doing purgatory mode and right. they're so excited for that yeah and they're like well we don't want to miss out on that <laughs> like, like we're still available monday through wednesday <laughs> exactly. here you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah and so they're like they're like well if i do a morning shift over here on this day then i can just go to knots i'll be tired but it's worth it like they're so like they're so and that's amped the, the about passion it. i love with the yeah. community is these characters will go above and beyond i have to, people that yeah. stopped knots to be here wow yeah and like i it's just it's obviously i leave that choice up to them because i i know the passion of working at knots mm. i i get it i understand it because right. it's like i had that you know i had that and it's yeah. so it's like i understand that they that they you know they don't want to give up knots to be here but if they make that choice, like they made that choice, yeah. you know, um, but I'm an advocate for them being able to do both. Well, everyone that I've talked it. to that that's been employed under you has said, you're probably one of the coolest bosses they've ever had. <laughs> and I, and I see it on I Instagram try. and I, I see, I'm like, you just I look like you're just so fun. You're so positive that you're, you're just willing to, you know, like you said, hear people out. Yeah. A lot of people at a lot of jobs don't have that creative freedom to do that. You know, they and don't. you're giving an oh, you pretty much have an open door policy of this like Literally. come to me at any time with an idea or something. Let's see if we can work with it. Literally, I've had employees that I because like my one thing is like just tell me the truth. That's my one thing. Right. Where I'm like, I don't care if you messed up. Tell me what happened and we can figure it out. Right. So I literally have employees like if they're running late, like I don't want I don't want the BS excuse of like, oh, I didn't look at the time. Like, um, oh, my dog I'm got stuck out. In traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, OK. So I have employees that literally like, sorry, I was taking a shit. I'll be right there. Like, <laughs> like, sorry, I was napping. <laughs> yeah. Overslept. I'll yeah, be right literally. There. And they'll, they'll, they'll just tell me the truth. And I'll be like, OK, get here. Like, be safe. Yeah. Like, get here. Like <laughs> literally today, one of my employees was like, uh, I left way too late. And, uh, it says 50 minutes for traffic. And I was kind of like, okay, drive safe. Like, just get here when you yeah. get here. Like, at least, you know, cause it's like, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all people and we're all living. And we all know California yeah. traffic. Yeah, no, exactly. It, you, you know, you got the it, five it, it over here, the 91 there. And I'd rather yeah. they get here safe than race here. Right. And you know, it's, I would just, I would rather have that and I could figure it out in the meantime. Just get and here. And I'm when willing you get to here. bet they're still trying to race here to get here on time. And they too. still do. Yeah, they, you know they, what I mean? And I'm just like, okay, like just be safe. But you know, 
and but we're all people. We're all human. We all understand that things happen. And every single staff member here is family to me. I will take care of them like they're my own. And um, I will be there for them. And I will provide whatever that they need. Like there's been employees that have been in situations. I let one employee live with me for a little bit. Awesome. I, I very much so am an advocate for if you need something, I'll help you. Yeah. And um, and then eventually they venture off and then they they do their own thing. And, exactly. it, and it helps them in the long run because but there have been hard situations where I have had to say goodbye some, to some employees, but they understand that it's not a personal decision. It's that they, it's they messed up. It's business. It's business. And they understand. And it's like it's there's been some situations where, you know, the employees are like they f- might feel awkward, you know, coming to tell me something. But then they tell me and I'm like, dude, like, why were you awkward to tell me this? Yeah, like, like it's fine. Like, like I, when have I ever put off that vibe? Yeah, you know, it's and, like, and then and then like, but it, it's kind of offsets some of the new employees. They're like, wait, like we can talk to you about this. And I'm like, yeah, like yeah, we're all at the end of the day, we're all here, human, and you we're know? all it's here like, to yeah. scare. We're all here to have fun, and like, but you know, if but at the same time, if I say, hey, pick up the broom and go sweep this, like go do it, and certain, they all have that mutual respect. There is a certain movie that uh, I will not say, just because uh, it's owned by a much bigger corporation. <laughs> <laughs> and their motto in one of their movies is we scare because we care. Mm-hmm. And I've I've always said like I I you know that means more than just something. You know, it's like you want to give the audience, you want to give the guests the best experience you're trying to sell them. 100%. You want to sell them that story and you 100%. want them to talk good about it. You want them to come back. And I think that's what drives us as haunt fans every single year as to like us going to like Halloween Horror Nights, not yeah. Scary Farm, Dark Harbor, escape rooms, all that stuff. We try to find that next level of fear that can immerse us yeah. into those movies that we all grew up with. Like, 100%. Watching. You know, how many times have I've seen Friday or for, um, Nightmare on Elm Street and then I go to bed and I'm just like, this fucker's going to kill me. <laughs> yep. You know, it's like, <laughs> yep. you know, but it's like, it's because the, they instill those fear into us that we're going to remember them the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it's, and, and the reason I say that is because I imagine you still instill a lot of fear in people on a daily basis. Very much so. But I, I have people I, that call me the next day. I, I could and tell really, me about their dreams and nightmares. That oh they had. my god! I've had guests that literally call me and say, "I think something followed me home." Miss Christina, what am I getting into? <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. It's all right. I got insomnia anyway. I'll be up all night. Anyway. Right? It's all good. You know, we barely sleep here. I'll and be there. up with you. You'll be mm-hmm. messaging me like. So what, what I'm a little fucked that? up. <laughs> I'm trying to watch comedy movies to get it out of my head. Yeah. Um. So I have to say uh, I'm I'm super stoked to to get to play. Now we're almost getting yeah. close to the to time. I got to ask you the the last and probably the hardest question of the show today. What is your favorite scary movie? Oh man. <laughs> so I have a, I have a couple. Okay. I'll, I have a couple. So my favorite traditional scary movie for me is Trick or Treat. I Ooh. love Trick or Treat. I bet you're excited for Six Flags this year then. Yes. yes. Mike, so Michael Doherty was at the panel this past really? weekend. And he was talking about it. He, he said he wants to go to every park that has Trick or Treat and scare it at one night. So go. Oh. That could be fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I, I, I'm a huge fan. I just, I, I love the simplicity of it and the I scary the and the eeriness. Effects. Yeah. Practical and like, is the way to just go. like the character of like that reveal of him taking off that Sam. mask. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I just, you just want to hug Sam. Yeah. Right. He's but just, like, he's so good, but then he just stab me with a lollipop. I don't know. Not if you follow the, if you follow the rules of Halloween, right? he'll then love you'll you. will be fine. Yeah. But I just, I love the simplicity of like, it's just a scary traditional little slasher movie yeah. and like i just like it and like the kids on the bus it's just eerie and like oh, that story yeah it's, it's like, just sad yeah. it's eerie it's scary it, it it's gives like you like all the emotions in a horror movie that yeah. you could expect and then i'm a big fan of the conjuring series big fan oh, that's a big one. fan of the conjuring series i love just like that that feeling so it's so funny because i went to i went to movie theaters and my um it was my little brother's uh first real scary movie <laughs> And so we went with my dad and my brother and me. And my brother wanted to go see this movie with us before because he wanted to take his girlfriend back in like middle school, you know, like so he could be to brave, go see the know, movie. Like, right, let's, exactly. Let's go, let's go see this one. Exactly. <laughs> so he went to go see it with us and my dad and I, we were talking about the movie on the way home because that that wardrobe scare, like when she was on top of the wardrobe. Yeah. Like, oh, man, and the clap, clap. And like, the clap, like, yeah. Oh, man, it was so scary. Especially when she's in the basement with the freaking yes. fire and then you see the hands. I'm like, whoa. I remember and, watching the trailer in theaters being like, this movie's going to be fucking terrifying. Yeah, and it was. It was. And my brother... <laughs> 
he, he was like 12 years old, just sat quiet in the back seat of the car the entire way home. He didn't say a word. He Done. was traumatized. Like he was just like, and then he was like, I have to go see this movie again. Like <laughs> My best friend was traumatized with Conjuring 2 yeah. because of the nun. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, the, oh, man. Dalek is terrifying. Yeah. Especially the scene when she's like dreaming and she looks, Mom, what's who's that down there? And I'm just like, oh, she's moving. Yeah. And then the, the whole scene of her with the portrait and then her popping out. I still think to this day that's one of the best jump scares oh, yeah. in the modern day. So good. Before. And I. I, I, I hate to say this, but the Nun movies were a little bit of a letdown for me from the Conjuring series. I thought series. the second one was better than the first second one. second one was better than the first one, but yeah. But I do agree on that statement where it was like, well, you have this massive character. Yeah. And you just kind of let me down. I, I will say the first one was going in a good route, especially like when they go into the freezer. Yeah, and then like the nun, yeah. And the Nun's sitting up. He goes, why are you scared? He goes, because I didn't have her sitting right there. And I was like, oh, that, shit. Yeah, like a couple of eerie moments. Yeah. Just, I don't know, going from Conjuring. Well. To the, uh, I was a little so, bit of a yeah, lie. and then for me, I was like, so you're telling me that she is capable to drink the blood of Christ and drop it into Valak? Yeah, I was like, I don't, no one is able no. to drink the blood of Christ. I was no. like, what is happening here? Yeah, I, th- I feel like they was. It a got a little, little too far-fetched. science fiction for yeah, me. You know what I mean? I was like, far-fetched. okay, this is a little out there now. I feel like maybe I don't know. I feel like they were just trying to get the movie together because it was such a popular character from the Conjuring series. I'm still waiting for the Crooked Man. Yes. Where's that at? Orm? Yeah, Where's... that would be. Oh man, or the painting oh, from uh, what's it? Uh, what's it called? It was in the what's what's the movie? The painting that has like the warped head. Oh. What's what's that movie? I know what you're talking about. Oh fuck, was it? Was it? That wasn't. Was it in? Was it in it? It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So funny story about that. So that character. So I thought that they were going to be coming out with like more with that character and i created like a little mini series oh hell yeah with that character from the painting and because they kind of went into it a little bit of like where it came from but it like stuck with me and it scared the crap out of me and i'm pretty sure it was from it yeah yeah it is because i remember um now i'm starting to get back to me i think it was chapter one yeah in the library yes. I believe. Yeah, yeah with the painting and yeah. I- that character scared the crap out of me. And I wrote like a little like little mini series of the creature in the painting. I couldn't. So, I remember when I watched the original it with uh, Tim Curry. Still one. I think in my opinion, I, I like him better as than Scar. But Scar yeah. did a really good he job. Did a, he did, he did a good job. Tim, you can't. It's Tim Curry. No. You know, it's like. There's it's no way me, you can outdo that. He's funny. Ugh. Like he's, his one liner so jokes crazy. Like, is so hilarious. And, but what traumatized me forever in that movie is when he splits open the shower on the shower scene when he splits yeah. open the hole. When I was a kid, I would look at my shower and like he's gonna come up and kill me. <laughs> like I was traumatized. Like my this is how this is how fucked up my family was. For me, it was the nightmare on Elm Street with the hand. Yeah, that too. And but this is how fucked up my aunt was. So she ran a daycare, and my dad would drop us off there because he'd work late. So I'd be like, okay. So after school, we'd go there. She would show all of the kids horror movies. Oh. We were watching Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We were watching all these horror movies. I'm like. This is why I can't sleep at night. I'm thinking Chucky's going to come running out of my damn closet killing me. I'm thinking the killer clowns from outer space are going to be outside of my window. Like, this is why I had, this is why I think I grew into the horror scene because I just, it was part of me. It traumatized yeah. me. So now I just learned to embrace it. Yeah, no, exactly. And now killer clowns from outer space is like my favorite movie of all yeah, time. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't know. I feel like I was the kid that stayed home to watch movies with my, with, with my parents not there. Right. And I would watch like, they're kind of like silly, but like the Leprechaun movies. Like, oh, the first one's great. Jennifer Aniston. Come on. <laughs> I love the Leprechaun movies. They're great. Leprechaun <laughs> in the like, hood, bro. I'm like looking back, I'm like, they're a little silly. I love silly. Leprechaun they're a little in the hood. Silly, but I was, I was so scared. Like I, I was probably like 11 it's a sitting at home. Character. Yeah. And I was like watching it. I was like, Oh, like, and the like, fact that it was actually was like, a person that was at the actual size yeah. and like the makeup and everything. No, I was like full on character. Yeah. And then I watched Anaconda. The big and, snake. Yeah. God. And that one scared the crap out my, of me my, too. My girlfriend is terrified. There's no snakes in the escape room, right? Cause no. she'll, she'll lose her shit if there no is. Snakes. I was like, okay, good. Cause she will, yeah. she will like, I'm not a big fan of snakes. I hate so snakes. Yeah. We're all Indiana Jones in that sense. Oh yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, well, where can people come down to the what's where's the location of the escape room so people can come out and yeah, visit yeah, you? Yeah, so um we're located in Fullerton. Um it's um off of Commonwealth. It's okay. 1111 East Commonwealth Avenue. 1111. <laughs> you 1111. you were very close from 1313 Monkey Bird Lane. Oh, huh? yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. 1313. Yeah. But um yeah, and then uh so we have Zoe Reborn and then we have Invention Room, Rock Band and Pinocchio soon to come. 
Yes. Um, with more immersive experiences in the agenda. So lots more to come. <laughs> when you guys watch this, Rock Band will be opening up this week. Yeah, so this book week. your this sessions week. now. Yeah. So that one's going to be a lot of fun, especially if you're a big fan of music. That one yeah. will be a lot of fun. But and of course, I, I'm excited for what's to come and oh, yeah. crazy adventures. And yeah, I always keep everybody updated with social media stuff. So I will be posting on there. You can. By the way, I'll let you guys on a little secret. Right behind this wall is. The invention room. It is. Right behind this wall. <laughs> right so, yeah. here. So yeah. So come by. Um, feel free to send me a DM. And then um, if you use the code Zoe10, it gives you 10% off 10%. of your booking, I love so. a good savings. That's yeah. awesome. Right Save you some tax, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's C-O-E-1-0. There it is. Use code Zoe10. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for inviting um, us out. Yeah, this thanks for been, having me. Of course. This is awesome. I'm excited to have you play. It'll be it'll be fun. I'm both excited and nervous i think i'm gonna have to use the restroom before i do it but it, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely but i i am looking forward to it i cannot wait i can't wait to see what the future holds for you yeah. uh, and i'm definitely gonna have to come back and try the rest of the rooms as well 100 um especially rock band i think rock band is honestly like zoe and rock band are like the two i'm psyched for and then even pinocchio's got me psyched and venture room has me like oh I, i'm gonna learn some history now yeah one. exactly like, a little, history buff. Little, bit of, little bit of taste of each i like it each. you yeah. guys love education you got some music and you got the horror. So exactly. That's where it's at. Uh, well, uh, Christina, thank you so much again for inviting us out to this, to this amazing, beautiful place. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're going to go play Zoe now. So uh, wish me luck because uh, I will probably be the one hiding behind under a coat to hide away from someone just yeah. like, acting like they can't see me, You'll but they're going to see me. Um, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but make sure to, f to follow. Um, what, are you, what are you guys on social media? So people um, can yeah, it. so we have uh, TikTok is at Zoe Reborn. Um, and then we have uh, my personal Instagram is Christina underscore Campani. And then we have um, our Escapade Games. Instagram is just Escapade Games. Awesome. Go follow them. Go check out a lot of their games. Yeah. There's uh, uh, a place out in Anaheim. There's a place out in Fullerton. So mm -hmm. go check out all their games. It's a really fun time. But with nothing else more, Christina, thank you so much. Of and course. Thank let's you. Let's go get scared in Zoe now. Woohoo!